Hello, welcome to the video for what is volume, the nav modifier volume. The nav modifier itself is really meant to be a tool. It does not have any example I can really show you without setting up artificial intelligence itself, but we're going to cover what is used for. This is just a quick video on what the nav modifier volume is. It is not a video on artificial intelligence itself. You can access the nav modifier volume in our volumes dropdown. And right now I've gone ahead and set up a nav modifier volume. If I go ahead and run my example, basically what I've done here is, let me move this little block out of the way. And this is going to be our platform where we want the player to walk on. The green you can see is our nav mesh and it defines where they can walk. Now let's say I want a small blocking area, maybe a curb or something, and we went ahead and we moved it over. Now, I don't actually want my artificial intelligence to walk on it. I want it to kind of be a blocker. But you'll notice my nav modifier itself, the nav mesh, goes around it. Let's, let's for example, let's do it like this. It's easier. So it's a divider, and we want them to be able to walk on the right side and the left side, but we don't actually want them to walk over this item. Well, that is what a nav modifier volume is for. I have a nav modifier volume here. I actually have it set where it is not translucent. Remember, volumes are clear when they or translucent or zero opacity when they are running. But for our example, I set a volume inside of it so that way we could see it. So our nav modifier volume, its default settings are the brush shape and the size as well as the default section which determines the class and what actually happens. By default this is null and what that does is it basically erases a navigation mesh wherever size this is. So let me just drag this over and put it up on top of our box here. And you'll notice now I only have green on the left and right and no green on the top. Basically I've told the, mo the nav mesh that was here in the middle to be null and now the artificial intelligence will not use it. So it's a great way of blocking out things where you do not want them to walk. You may have a house and it may have some walkways and it may have some fences or some trees, but you have a backyard that your nav mesh itself fully encompasses due to the size and shape it is. But there are certain areas where your nav mesh are being drawn that you don't actually want the player to go into. That is what you'll use the nav modifier for. You'll just drop, drop in nav modifiers. You can have multiple ones. Let me go ahead and get rid of my box here. We don't need any more. Let's take this nav modifier. Let's say we was to duplicate it and drop it down. You'll notice, unfortunately, it doesn't give me enough area for my player to walk, so it basically deletes the entire thing. If I was to make it smaller, you'll notice we basically have a blank little space where the player, the artificial intelligence, sorry, will not be able to walk because we put a little null modifier there. Now, the other options for our modifiers are as follows. By default, it is null. We also have default, which basically means nothing. I don't really know why you'd have it there. Maybe you want to toggle it in run time to allow an area where a player can and cannot go to. So default basically means normal and there's no, modifi no modifier applied. That'll be the same as if you applied none. Null, we've already covered. Basically, it removes any nav mesh. Low height. And what you're going to see is this is going to turn it into blue. What this does, if we read the tooltip, is basically it's an area that's generated in spaces with insufficient free height above. Cannot be traversed by anyone. Let's say you put this underneath a low hanging area where you actually don't want a player to get to. The nav mesh normally may let them, but you want for aesthetic sake or just you know, to prevent possible bugs, you don't actually want the player to go there. You can use this, and basically it's going to prevent them from going under the area. However, it can be overridden under special circumstances, if you set it up properly, and things like crouching, and that will be able to go under that area appropriately. The last one is obstacle. This will turn it red. Basically, obstacle, think of it as quicksand or water or some really difficult to navigate surface, as you can see in the description here. Basically, it is a 
high cost area that shouldn't be traversed unless no other path exists. So let's say for example, we had a open area to get to our player. Down the middle of it, we had a minefield and we can go ahead and set it up as a high cost navigation area. It's an obstacle. We don't really want our player, our artificial intelligence to go over it because it's an obstacle. Go ahead and set up as an obstacle and basically if there's green, they will traverse over the green. If there's no green available, if they have nowhere that they can traverse normally, then they will take the red route. So you could set that up as basically maybe had multiple paths through a map. Some of them were intended to be less used. You could go ahead and mark your less used ones as obstacles so that way the artificial intelligence will not use them as often. But again, the artificial intelligence will recompute based on your settings and other things we're not going to cover the best path from point A to point B. And it may find that a red path is less time than a green path simply based even taking into account the obstacle. So you can use this obstacle modifier on things where you really don't want them to go. So if we could, for example, set this up. If I actually have to take, okay, let's actually, where's the little one at? What'd I do with it? There's this little one, right? Okay, we delete that one. If we change this one to obstacle, now, if we assuming we had paths around the edges, okay, you know what? We don't need to assume anything. This is a game. We can go like this and then like that. And now you can see we will allow the AI to go over this ledge, but only if the green paths around are not available. Now, at some point later in the game, maybe these are doors or these are pressure plates or there will be rocks. Let's say because nav meshes can be recomputed at real time, an obstacle pops up. And it now makes it where this is the only place you can go over. Well, there you go. They're not going to use this unless they have to. That is the point of the obstacle navigation modifier. And that's it. That covers our navigation modifier volume. It's a great way of cleaning up your map. That is the primary use I have found for it. When you use a nav mesh, you may have areas that you don't want your AI to go into. Maybe you have circular stairs and you don't want them to go on the bottom part. Just throw in some nav mesh modifiers, set them to null and basically white out the navigatable area and it makes it safer for your artificial intelligence. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.